Hi guys, and welcome back. And it is the end of the year. It's the end of 2022. And as such, we got to go through our metal award show where we showcase the very best. I got it, son. That's wonderful. That the metal genre had to offer us this year. And what a year it has been. We've had our ups and we've had our downs, but always we've had great metal. So join me on this journey. I'll have all the sections chaptered down below on the timeline. And of course, here is the list of all the categories that I'll be going through. So if you want to pause this video, you can and write down below, what would you put in each of these categories? But anyway, without wasting more time, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe for more content that will be coming out in the new year. But besides that, we're going to jump right in and let's do this. So when it comes to the best single of the year, it is important to understand that what makes a good single. And in my opinion, a good single is a song that represents the band perfectly in literally the shortest amount of time in one song. And I couldn't think of a better band than Invent animate with their latest single called Elysium. So a few years ago, I gave Invent Animate the best metalcore album of the year with their album Grayview. And ever since then, I've been constantly listening to them. I've been really enjoying the fact that they can provide so much variety and yet it stays consistent. There's a good flow to it and it is perfectly represented in the track Elysium. It has a very quiet, melancholic opening that eventually grows and expands to these very elaborate and lush choruses while still maintaining a very strong level of heaviness. And this all accumulates into the ending where we get this insanely emotional and powerful ending breakdown that has just stuck with me ever since the first time I've listened to it. And since I've listened to it, I listened to it again and again and again and again. Invent Animate knows how to do metalcore correctly, both with its writing and mixing, in that the mix is tight, it's aggressive, it's big, and most importantly, every instrument has their moment to shine. With no instrument really fighting to be in front, everything is balanced, it's well mixed. The vocals of Marcus are so crystal clear and tight. And I've been saying the word emotional a lot, well, because it is. Marcus has a very good voice when it comes to conveying emotion, both when he's doing this. And overall, the blend is just beautiful. I love everything about this song. It was definitely a grower because initially I didn't know how to feel about it. But the more I listened to it, the more I gained an appreciation for it. Yeah, now it's definitely one of my favorite medical tracks of the year. So yeah, best single of the year goes to Elysium by Invent Animate. All right, now to expand it a bit more and look at the best EP of the year and hands down, it was a no brainer. This band has proven year after year, release after release, that they're not a band to take lightly. And that is of course, Spirit Box with their EP, Rotoscope. Now, what can I say about Spirit Box that has not been said by everyone, including me with all my previous videos about them? I did a review for this album earlier this year where I described it as the best EP on the market. And the reason being is the fact that it is short, it is sweet. Every minute of this EP is packed with content and it never feels like a waste, nothing feels like a filler, and all three tracks on this EP are massive, they're giant. And I feel like this cemented Spirit Box as a band that you can trust in the long run. With a lot of bands, they do a lot of changes, they have a lot of variety throughout their music. But Spirit Box has always kept their fans on their toes with every release showing a slightly different aspect of the band and what they're capable of. When I look back to their first EP, their self-titled EP, even then they had so much variety from each track and they've just expanded that with more releases that have come out. The songs on this new EP are no different. Everything feels fresh. It feels groovier than before and in the best way possible. They talked about how they wanted to go a bit more, you know, kind of industrial and they successfully did it, but retaining their core values as a metal band and what they're so good at. And as such, it means that fans never feel alienated as some other bands uh, do. And what they get is something brand new. It's fresh and it is so well produced as well. I have nothing bad to say about this EP. Every track I have listened to on repeat, nonstop. And because of the short length of the EP, and I think the correct length of an EP, I've had this thing on a loop all the time, all the time. Me particularly, my favorite track though was Sew Me Up. I don't know why, it's just that 
groovy bounciness to that verse riff and the writing in general. I just love that shit. So yes, best EP this year goes to none other than Spearbox with Rotoscope. All right, now we are gonna go a bit back in time because I kind of created this new category because one, I couldn't figure out where else to put this band. And two, I think it's good to sort of look back in time a bit and look at, you know, the longevity of certain bands. So with that in mind, I kind of call this like the classics category. Bands that have been in the game for, let's say more than, I don't know, 15 years and just sort of represent to see how they hold up to today's standards. And the winner for me, which unsurprising, and this band surprises me every time they put out a release, how modern they can sound, considering the length of time they've been in the game. And that is of course, Lamb of God with the new album, Omen. And my God, this band has proved that you don't need to be using seven strings, eight strings, nine strings or whatever to create a heavy ass tone and to get your disgustingly good message across. When we look at a guy like Randy Blythe, who's been in the game so long, the fact that his vocals up until this point have never degraded, if anything, they've improved over time and they're still sounding so consistent and so demonic and so commanding this whole time. The guitars sound big, they sound full, and the blending between the guitars and the bass, just well balanced. The drums are not overpowering. The kick drums are not in your face 24 seven. They're in the background doing what they need to do best, and that is keeping that foundation. And somehow they still sound big to me. They sound great. Everything is just blending in beautifully. The writing is your standard Lamb of God. So if you liked any Lamb of God up until this point, you're of course gonna like this as well. And I think the best part about it is that, as I've said before, this band just somehow knows how to be consistent, powerful, and commanding throughout all the years. With so many bands coming into the ring, this band somehow still has the ability to stand out and make a statement and still reign over other bands. Now it would be wrong of me if I didn't also talk about the runner up pick that I also had for this category. And that was of course, uh, Behemoth with their latest album, which I will not be able to pronounce. So I'll write it here. But Behemoth is another band that I've loved for many years now. I love their message. I love their music. I love their genre. And honestly, I love Nurgle himself. I think he's a great role model when it comes to the metal scene. I love their new album. Definitely more black metal as ever. It seemed the band has been going down this path for a while now, and it's consistently good. Do I think it's as good as their previous two albums? Not really, but it still is a very strong contender when it comes to the blackened death metal scene. You can even say it's kind of getting more towards the true cult black metal as well. But again, it is powerful, it is demonic, it is scary, and I think it's worth checking out as well. All right, now moving into this category, this was a category I sort of created a couple of, you know, award shows back for bands that I couldn't really, you know, put into a certain box. And because of that, I've chosen to call this category the out of the box pick, because it's a genre that, I'll be honest, it's a genre that I don't listen to all that much, but I found an album in it that I love so much and that is of course, Author and Punishers with Crueler. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but I'm just gonna assume that's correct. So Author and Punisher is an industrial act, a solo project that has been sort of, you know, bubbling and now I feel like he's finally come into his own. He's exploded onto the scene. And I feel like a lot of it's due because he did a recent tour with the band Tool. And I think he definitely expanded a lot of people's minds. He got out to a wider audience now. A uh, fun fact, with this new album, it even has writing credits from none other than Danny no, Carey no, no, and no, Justin no. Chancellor of the band Tool. And this quality of sound is exemplified perfectly in its opening track, Drone Carrying Dread, which is a very progressive track that has a slow build that eventually builds and builds and builds. And it has a lot of moments where you can clearly tell that a band such as Tool were involved in here. It is a very emotional track. I absolutely love it. It was definitely a love at first sight track and I listened to it consistently. The vocals are eerie, but very powerful at the same time. <laughs> the synthesis and of course if you know author and punisher he has this big rig of machinery to make a sound and they are able to have this more of a mellow feel to it but still retaining all that aggressiveness and power it's like kind of bipolar in a weird way but also very consistently bipolar as i said 
The song builds and builds. It's very dynamic as a track where it has its quieter moments, its louder moments. And even though there are moments that sound very robotic, especially with the synthesis and his rig of machinery, it has a very nice organic feel to it as well. That means that you can listen to it multiple times and you won't get like ear fatigue and it never feels like there's too much compression on it either. This I can say about the rest of the album as well. I think it's definitely a masterpiece if you want to put in, I guess, the industrial solo project sort of field. And I honestly think everyone should go check it out. If you don't know Author and Punisher, please go listen to Author and Punisher. He is well worth it. But yeah, best out of the box pick goes to Author and Punisher with Krula. All right, we are now cranking up the gain knob again because we are now talking about technical death metal. Now, if you know me and you know this channel, I do have a soft spot for technical death metal because you know what? I think everybody likes to have a bit of a chaotic moment in life and I'm no different. So last time I did this category, I gave the award to none other than Inferi with Vile Genesis. And honestly, I thought this was the peak when it came to technical death metal. But then this year rolled around and an old favorite came back. And that favorite is of course, Fallujah with Empyrean. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. So I have a long relationship with this band where I first found out about them back in 2016 with their release of Dreamless. It was an absolutely amazing, in some ways ambient experience of technical death metal. I loved every part of it. It was so dynamic and so beautiful. And then 2019 rolled around with their next release, The Undying Light, which I'll be honest, I found to be a bit of a disappointing album, which sort of took away from the reasons why I loved the band initially. It became sort of like a post hardcore thing. I wasn't really understanding where they were going and what they wanted to do with this album. But then they came back this year with Empyrean, which I'll be honest, I think is a masterpiece in technical death metal writing. If we were to go back to the origins of tech death, we have a couple of bands we can look to. We have, of course, the band Death. Now I am become Death, the destroyer of worlds. Which was, again, beautiful. And then there was another band there as well called Cynic, which this band, I assume, heavily got inspired for that because Cynic is a very similar thing where it's ambient, it's spacey, and it's also technical. And that's what Fallujah does as well here. My favorite track on this is Into the Eventide. And I think it's mainly for the fact it is such an emotional song overall and the whole album as well. I've been saying the word emotional a lot in this video. And the reason being is that a good album to me should have some emotional reaction. If I didn't care for an album at all, I probably wouldn't make any reaction or any you know, connection with it. So when an album actually gets me emotional or makes me feel things, that's when you know you've done good. And that's what this album did for me. Through the whole thing, it felt like I was in this journey. I was taken away to a far off planet. I was, you know, evolving. It, it felt like I was on a psychedelic trip. It, it, it hit so many good moments for me. As soon as I heard it, I had to give it to them. I've always known they were an amazing band. And when Undying Light came out, I was worried but I don't have to worry anymore because they've redeemed themselves with this album. And also I did have a runner up for this category and that goes to Exocrine with Hybrid Sons. Now up until Fallujah put out their album, I was gonna give Hybrid Sons the win this year because even though they're less spacey and psychedelic and more core technical death metal, I still loved everything about it. It was dynamic, it was constantly moving, it was progressive and it wasn't insane like bands such as Beneath the Massacre or Origin where I feel it's technicality for technicality's sake whereas bands like Beyond Creation, Exocrine and even Fluja choose to slow things down as well and, and makes it an overall more enjoyable experience. So I'd also recommend checking out Exocrine. They were the runners up for this year. Still an amazing album. I love the artwork for as well. Feels like an eternal being, a divine entity. But yes, to go back to it, Fluja. Imperium Best Tech Death Album of the Year. All right, this next one is very important because if you're a chugster like me, I just made up that term, you're gonna like your breakdowns. I like my breakdowns. This channel and a lot of channels um, on YouTube love looking at breakdowns. So of course, this year, you gotta have Breakdown of the Year category. And I think I've had this previous years as well. I can't remember, I gotta look back on that. And this year, there was so many breakdowns. I feel like every band has a breakdown now that they could call their best. And this year for me, there has to only be one. 
Now, a bit of background, I go to the gym. It probably doesn't look like it, but I do. And for me, when I am lifting the heaviest of weights, when I am pulling iron, when I am fighting the gods in the gym, I need the correct music to help me get there. And this band has consistently done that for me. I've posted occasionally on my Instagram, go check it out if you're not following, that when I'm doing my PRs, this band is always playing. And that band is of course, Distant. My boys are distant. My ever so loving boys are distant. And this year they've done it again. They've given me another breakdown that I can use to lift heavy ass weight. And that is the breakdown, or should I say two breakdowns from the song Exophil. So Exophil was one of the singles that released in accordance with their new album launch that will be coming out next year. And this song, again, just killed it front to back. But specifically, we're talking about the breakdown and the breakdowns were intense. I feel like Distance Breakdowns have always been very elaborate. They've always been very unique and very memorable compared to other bands. And this is no different where it just had this really insane weight to it. Like the hammer of Thorx crashing down on the earth, you know, the earth shattering, it rumbles. It is so intense and all the instruments to create this breakdown are so big, so massive. And one instrument you want to think about, but the vocals themselves, especially on the second breakdown with Alan sort of leading us into that breakdown has this really low guttural voice. That almost adds to their harmonics of the breakdown itself. It just makes it heavier, more intense. And my God, all I can say is I cannot wait for their new album. It's gonna be immense. I just, I just, I can feel it. I can feel it. Did I have a runner up for this year? Yes, I did. And that runner up goes to Awake in Providence with We Are Eternity. Specifically the breakdown after, I guess the first chorus. Like with Distant, it was intense. It was deep, it was elaborate. And the mix only complemented the weight of it all. Mercer's vocals, are also just so commanding, so devilish, and so abhorrently scary. Like he's got this ridiculous command and demanding of your attention. And that breakdown was just, oh, God, it was good. It was good, but unfortunately it wasn't as good because of course, Distin is taking the win on this one with Exofilth. All right, so my light died. So this is like an hour or so later, but we're gonna keep chugging along because now we're heading into the heavy hitter categories. This is kind of like your Mr. Olympia categories. And to kick this off, we're of course gonna be looking at Metalcore. Now this year, for the longest time, I thought Gent had won the year when it comes to the best metal genre of the year. But then about midway through, even three quarters of the way through, I looked back and I saw that there was a huge array of Metalcore albums that dropped this year that I was like, damn, that's good. And I listened through a lot of them and I was just stunned at how did I miss all of these amazing albums. So when coming to this category, it was a bit of a tough one and I had all these to pick from. However, there was one that reigned supreme. From day one, when this album dropped, I had this on non-stop. I've loved this band for many years now. Their previous album, I considered to be a perfect 10 out of 10. And that is none other than Northlane with Obsidian. <laughs> Now you probably did see this coming. Northlane to me is one of those bands that have just exploded. They've gone from being this sort of like, you know, pretty decent gent band to one of probably the best gent slash metalcore, if you want to call it gentcore, bands out on the scene. Alien in 2019 when it dropped was one of the best albums of the year by far. And piggybacking off that, we have now Obsidian, which it is just as good. It is so lush and it has the perfect example of what I would call vibes in that it gives me the sense of the matrix or even the movie Drive with the thematics that it uses. The fact that they even use the term battery, turn me into a battery is a direct reference to the matrix. At least I, it, it, I think it is. I mean, I couldn't reference anything else. Coincidence? I think not. And they even added trip hop elements with the track Nova, which was this beautiful sort of chill moment in the album where we could, you know, recuperate, become one with ourselves before heading into some of the heaviest shit you can imagine from this album. From front to back, it's an amazing trip. 
I loved every second of it. And yeah, it's North Lane. That like it's North Lane. Like, you know, I loved a lot of these albums that came out in, from the metalcore scene, but none of them could compete with the king that is North Lane. And of course, I did have a runner up because there was one other album that could reach that bar, if not cross it, unfortunately. And that was, of course, Thornhill with their album, Heroin. Now, Thornhill pretty much reinvented themselves as well this year and came out with an album that is very Deftones inspired. And you know what? It was an amazing trip. It didn't beat North Lane, but God damn it, I still highly recommend you go check it out, Thornhill Heroin. But yes, give it up for North Lane with Obsidian. Thank you. Now, before we get into our two biggest categories of the award show, I wanted to take this moment to sort of uh, pay my respects to a band that have pretty much done a comeback. And hence why I'm calling this category the best comeback of the year. Surprisingly enough, it's going to Architects with their latest album, The Classic Symptoms of a Broken Spirit. Big title. Now, I've said some things on this channel about Architects, especially with their previous album, uh, for those that wish to exist. This new Architects album, it's not good. I've not hid my opinion about it. I honestly thought that album was a bit of a hack and not the best work at all from a band that has such a high caliber when it comes to writing. Well, what does that make, Ketchup? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And now with this latest album, I definitely had very low expectations, even lower than before. The fact that there was not really an album cover, uh, the first track that came out, Tear Gas, was just felt like an animal's knockoff, which I was like, come on, guys, like, you, you just made this track. Why are you making another one expecting people are gonna like it? And overall, my hope for this band had died until the album dropped and I actually listened to the entire thing and my opinion did change. I think they have done a lot of things better than they did in the last album. The last album, it felt like a first attempt at incorporating electronic music with the style of metalcore, something that a band like Northlane has found a way to perfect at this point. And Architects are kind of lagging behind, but I have to give credit where credit is due and say that this album is not leaps and bounds better, but it's a huge improvement and I can definitely say it's a comeback. The music is a lot more coherent, the writing is a lot more consistent, and they are definitely exploring more of electronic music than before and it makes it, I guess, a bit more experimental and a bit more, you know, exciting to listen to. I'm of course gonna compare this to Bring Me The Horizon because it's there's no, literally no other band who's done such a similar thing than Bring Me The Horizon. And like Bring Me The Horizon, the second album going into this new genre was for sure better. It ironed out a lot of the problems I had with the first one. It explored more elements that the band can go down. It definitely just made me kind of believe in the band a bit more. I'm still on the fence with them, but I have to admit that this album is good. And I guess the best way I can describe it is if you can honestly listen to this album with a very objective perspective, if you can ignore a lot of the albums they've done previously and sort of compare it to their last album, then this is a pretty big win. And it does make me excited to see how they explore these elements in the future. Are they going to bring back the heaviness that Bring Me did with the, the post-human album where they brought back a lot of their heaviness, even though they tried to get rid of it? Or are they gonna go even more into electronic side and maybe become the next Enter Shikari? We will not know until their next release, but whatever it'll be, I'm curious. Uh, my expectations have gone slightly higher, but that doesn't mean they can't fall again. But for the time being, I have to give Architects credit and say that this is definitely the comeback album of the year. All right then, this is the big one the best deathcore album of the year. Now I know what you're thinking. It's obvious, isn't it? Well, not quite. There was a lot of deathcore that came out this year. Amazing deathcore that came out this year. Some of the best ever to come out ever. But there can only be one winner. There can only be one winner and technically a runner up that can take the title for best deathcore of 2022. Now you might be thinking it's the obvious one. Oh, but you are wrong because the best deathcore album for me this year was none other than Fit for an Autopsy with Of What the Future Holds. That's why I let that sink in. I didn't pick Lorna Shore. And I don't think I have to explain myself because I've explained myself so many times about that band. So I'm not going to, because this is for Fit for an Autopsy. Now Fit for an Autopsy came out with their album at the very start of the year and what a strong way 
to start the year. An album that was definitely anticipated. Sea of Tragic Beasts was an amazing metalcore album that really just showed that this band is at the cutting edge of the deathcore genre, incorporating the only way I can describe it as Gojira with deathcore, with Gojira being an amazing band overall with the genre of deathcore, which is in a very aggressive genre that can evolve and adapt. And Fit for Autopsy did that once again with this album. Now, initially when the first single came out for this album, I was a bit apprehensive. It was a track, uh, Far From Heaven. As soon as those first notes hit, I was like, is this just Gojira's Another World? Heavily inspired. And I was like, uh-oh. But months went on, we got a new single. Eventually the single came to be Two Towers. And now Two Towers for me was definitely the turning point. Two Towers changed everything. It straight away showed off how good of a band this is when it comes to writing and just how dynamic they are. And not just, you know, being loud or quiet, but being both fast and slow. And it just showed up also Joe Bad and his vocal range and how big it is. And this album for me definitely cements him as being up there with other singers such as Corey Taylor or Phil Bozeman when it comes to how dynamic these guys can be and how experimental and how different their vocal stylings can be. The mix itself is impeccable because it would, because it is none other than Will Putney who mixed and produced this album. The legend himself, and I said this before, Will Putney downright has the best guitar tones in the hardcore and deathcore scene. Hands down, they're organic, they're chunky, they're fizzly. And when a breakdown hits, it fucking hits hard especially on tracks like In Shadows. Man, that ending breakdown is so immense and heavy. And then Two Towers, going back to that for a second, just the fact that they could do so much with it is such, wow. Like I was awestruck after listening to Two Towers. It's, and I was like, this is probably the best Deathcore track was for years to come. It was a great narrative front to back. It never felt stale. And I can say that for the entire album, it never felt stale. And that was one of the criticisms I have for Lorna Shore's Pain Remains is it always just felt like they were just going back to their regular routine for every track. And by the end of the album, I couldn't really tell which songs which. There's no distinct feature of any one track that made it stand out from any others. While for here, every track has its thing to shine. <laughs> I forgot the track track name but below, but it had this intro where it sounded like these weird sort of like rubbery drums that I'd never heard before. Again, uber unique. I've never heard anything and I can only compare it to a band like Gojira who in their last uh, album Amazonia, they did similar things where they incorporate a lot of tribal elements to their music just to give it a bit more exoticism. And I can say the same for Fifth Heart Hopsy. Fifth Heart Hopsy have proven that they are an amazing band ever since when I heard Black Mammoth for the first time. I was hooked. I understand why a guy like Matt Heffy of Trivium says that Fifth Runner's Topsy is the best band on the planet because they have everything that a great band is meant to have. They just do. It's just, I'm gonna end this review of Fifth Runner's Topsy here because I feel like I'll go on forever. And a quick side note, there was a runner up in this category and I know what you're thinking, surely, is it? No, it's actually Shadow of Intent with Elegy. Shadow of Intent, another really strong candidate in the death course scene that have proven that they can stand with the lights of anyone out there. The writing, strong. The incorporation of orchestral elements is strong. Everything about it is strong. And those vocals are so disgusting and so insane. Yeah, and they had to be the runner up. They had to be. The only reason they're the runner up is honestly just having a bit more variety. That's really it. But yeah, that's the deathcore scene, the big one done, one to go. All right, now let's wrap this up with our final category. And that is of course, the gent, or as it's meant to be pronounced, gent. Uh, again, humongously strong year for gent. I honestly thought this was the year of gent because every major band has been putting out a gent album and we still have two to go, but still, the fact that every major gent band announced or put out an album this year, it, it felt like it was the year of gent. And mainly that's all I was listening to this year. But yes, it has to all come down to the winner of the gent category. And it was really tight between the winner and the runner up. And I could have put either of them in either position. They were both that good. But in reality, it can only be one. And this year I went with Animals as Leaders, Parhisa, which I am pretty sure I did not pronounce that correctly. I will write it here so you can try and pronounce it yourself. Yes, this album was a joy from an absolute joy. When Monomyth first came out, I thought it was one of the best songs in the world. I thought, wow, this proves that you don't need a vocalist to be an amazing band. The, the fact that it was that Meshuggah inspired 
feel to it. It felt like Bleed, but more modern and animals as leaderified, basically what I can say. In fact, I love this track so much when Tosin announced the merch drop for the track, I bought it immediately and spent the absorbent 16 pound shipping cost from America, but it was worth it. I love my top, I love it. It's, uh, it's honestly, what can I say with this album? It hits every emotional point you could think of and animals being animals, they go everywhere with Gent. They go everywhere. The thumping, the chugs, and just the insane variety from track to track to track. I also must point out that this album heavily is inspired by Meshuggah, I think I said it previously, but it definitely feels like, especially with these long extended outros that are works together. Very Meshuggah-esque if you know Meshuga, and they're writing a lot more like syncopated feel to it. And overall, the performances of all three members of the band are just at the peak, at just the peak of performance. You cannot fault any of them. So yeah, this was an easy one, Animals as Leader, but there was a runner up and I mentioned them just a second ago. But yeah, the runner up was Meshuga with Immutable. Uh, Meshuga, I gotta be honest, their studio albums don't tend to have the best sounds for me. I don't know why. I, it just feels like this is such a huge band and all their sounds just feel a bit small on the studio version. But when you see them live, they're the heaviest thing in existence. And this album is heavy. It is beyond heavy. I really like the fact they've gone more organic with their sound. It's just you know, adds a lot more weight and warmth to the overall timbre of the music. But yeah, no, Meshuggah was another album that I was listening to nonstop. Cannot fault them at all. But yes, this year it went to Animals as Leaders. All right then, that was it. This was a long ass video. So thank you if you stuck around this long. I really do appreciate it. What a year we have had. I hope you wrote down below who you thought should have won the awards this year. And all I can say is can't wait for 2023. I feel like things are finally looking up-ish. <laughs> And I'm just excited with the albums that will be coming out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And of course, subscribe for more content that will be coming out in the new year. And all I can say is stay hydrated and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.